We're talking push trucks, PA Posse, really big right rear wheels, and racing on dirt. From Silver Dollar to Williams Grove, Eldora to Devil's Bowl, and of course, Knoxville. This is Winged Nation, presented by Hercules Tires. Now your hosts, Steve Post and Aaron Evernham. Hello again. It is MRN Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tire here on the Motor Racing Network. So glad you joined us. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. And we are glad you're along for the ride. We've got a great program. Big winners last weekend. Sheldon Hodenshield, he swept the All-Stars. We'll talk to Sheldon. Kerry Madsen won the Jackson Nationals. We'll chat with Kerry and Dave Argerbright from Sprint Car and Midget Magazine. Always good to talk with Dave and uh, get his perspective on the world. Absolutely. Good stuff. Great, great stuff. Aaron Evernham and Steve Poston, we are so glad that you've joined us here on MRN, on our YouTube, on our Facebook page. And we have got, <laughs> folks, this is, this is, we've got a fly in the studio. We've got the fly in the studio. So if you see us swatting, no, we aren't, aren't having some issues other than this fly <laughs> That is uh, just absolutely terrorizing us right Where now. Where was he? Into the, before know, the show this thing, started, this he was not here. This fly didn't show until Craig started playing the music. That's what it is. It's Craig's uh, fault. He was playing music yeah. that the fly apparently liked. Uh. So uh, so there we go. A little added value for those of you watching <laughs> via video stream. you know. And then the rest of you, we hope it's not part of the show. Uh, we are glad you joined us and having a great time. We're going to talk with Sheldon Hottenshield, and he's won three in a row. But, Aaron, uh, you know, I think when we look at this... When we've looked at historically, I mean, in the last three, four, five years, when we look at the All Stars, the Articat All Star Circuit of Champions, we always kind of look at this as Dale Blaney's tour. Yeah. How many wins is Dale going to have? When does he clinch the championship? And where does he get the trophy? I mean, you yeah. know. Um, and I think that, you know, maybe we knew that going into this year, although early on we found out that that's not going to be the case. And now with six races left, he is in a whale of a battle. Chad yep. Kemenaw's eight points back. Sheldon's only 46. And Sheldon's the hottest driver right now on the tour uh, with six races left. Man, this is not the Dale Blaney tour anymore. No, it's not. And I think we've talked about this a few weeks back. Chad Kemenaw, probably 10 years ago with Brian Kemenaw's brother's crew chief, he, it used to be the Chad Kemenaw show That's with true. the All-Stars. Yes. So now he's back in the picture, really close points battle, and now Sheldon is is coming on strong. First and foremost, I think it's really cool that you have an Ohio-based tour and the names Blaney, Kemenaw, and Hoddenshield are yeah, battling. Absolutely. I just think that the, the history, the family names, mm -hmm. and everything else. Where this gets interesting to me is there's six races left. They end the season with two at Atomic, which is yep. kind of a home game for everybody. They have two at Eldora, and you can make the case that all three of those drivers get around Eldora. Yeah. To me, this thing maybe cannot be won at Port Royal this weekend with two nights, but it could be lost. could be broken, yeah. It could be broken at Port Royal because uh, you know how it is. It's the same with the World of Outlaws. When, when there's a tight battle, yeah. you've got to survive going into the Grove late in the with year. the posse, absolutely. You can have a good night and finish 18th. Yeah. Yeah, I no. remember when I ran the Outlaws, gosh, 12 years ago now, going to Williams Grove, it was like a feature win to make the feature. To make it, yeah. yeah. You so. can make the case. You can make the case with Dale, with Chad, or with Sheldon, okay? You can make the case this week at Port Royal that they could win both nights. You could also make the case to say they could fail to qualify both nights. Absolutely. And that's where this gets exciting. So to me, again, I don't know that you win it at Port Royal. Yeah. But I think you could lose you're it. You're adding Deweese and Hodnett and Dietrich and all those guys to that list. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. It really is. Doug Ash up there. I mean, yeah. Lucas Wolf. I mean, it's yep. just like the list goes on and on. And and you know, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough field. So it is going to be fascinating. We're going to talk with Sheldon Hoddenshield in a little bit. We'll ask him about going into port because uh, it's you know one of those historic racetracks that uh, uh, that that right now is on top of its game and uh, they are really really doing well. I, one of the things I'm you know it's it's funny we just got done talking about points. I'm not a huge point guy. I mean, I understand this time of the year. It's like I, I really dislike in March talking about point battles. Yeah. You know, I mean, once we get past Knoxville, then I'm all right talking about it. And when we have something spectacular like the Articat. Yeah. Uh, and we're tour, down to six races. We're down to six yeah, races yeah, to getting... go. Now, now, we start, now we can start talking about it. The list that I always love is, um, is uh, ibracing.com. I, I love the race winner list because yeah. the reality to me is I want to go to a race to see the guy win, not to win the point race. I mean, I, I pay to go to the race that, that race night. that night. And so to me, winning, and, and ultimately it takes care of itself. And when we look at this year and when you look at his list, Brian Clawson has 25 wins. And. Tragically, that's uh, we've lost Brian, and that's his number. And his is a uh, uh, non-wing and wing and, and midgets and yeah. everything else. And and what a season he was having along the way. But when you look at the wing cars, we've got Donnie Schatz and Greg Hodnett tied with 21 <laughs> wins apiece. 
21 wins apiece. Uh, we got Dob Meyer sitting there with 15. People what? hope to win those in their career, in their yeah. lifetime. I know, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Hotna just picked up a win this past week at Port on Saturday night. And so this gets interesting. I'm just curious. I'm, I'm curious now as to um, which one of those who's two. Who's going to win. Who's going to win more races. Yeah. Um, I think Schatz definitely has the hotter hand right now. Hotnet's been a little bit uh, off. In fact, we're going to talk to Hotnet. In fact, I'm going to talk to him on uh, for Thursday for our podcast. Yeah. And my question is, are you a little off? Yet he goes out and has a great run in Knoxville. Yet he won Port on yeah. Saturday night. If that's off. Really off. Yeah, if that's off, yeah, he won uh, the Jersey Rush race a couple yeah. of weeks. I mean, so um, the pace he was going early in the year, I was thinking 30 or more. It'd be interesting to see it really well. Well, but, and it also depends how many races both have left. Yeah, the shots you know, have I mean, more on the tour or? Yeah, I mean, we're getting to the stage now in September where it's busy weekends yeah. only. Uh, For both. There, there's a Williams Grove race this Wednesday night, or the World of Outlaw race this Wednesday night. But then I think after that, it's mostly weekends. Yeah. I don't think we have many midweek shows. Um, but you know, Pennsylvania, they run uh, right through the 1st of November True. up at Susquehanna. So, yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> it is going to be interesting to see. And I, I, I love what, uh, what, um, uh, Brad Brown does there mm-hmm. with IB Racing. That's always just one of my favorite spots. Let's take a look at our Classic Ink screen printing and embroidery results page. Uh, the big one was the 38th Annual Agco Jackson Nationals up at Jackson Motorplex. Friday night, Lucas Oil ASCS Preliminary Night. Uh, Ian Madsen picked up the win. Saturday, the National Sprint League Prelim Night. How about Brownie scoring the victory? Yeah. And then Sunday, the National Sprint League, 25000 to win. Kerry Madsen over his brother Ian and Brian Brown. And we'll talk to Kerry in just a little bit. Uh, Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour presented by Mav TV was Aaron Reitzel. We talked to Aaron last week. Ashley and I did here on the program. And uh, he was looking to turn things around, and maybe he's turned it around now with that (laughs) one. Good start. Uh, It's a good way to do it, exactly. Uh, World of Outlaw Craftsman Sprint Cars, they had the Outlaw Energy Showdown at Skagit, and it was David Gravel all weekend Mm -hmm. long. We talked to David uh, this coming week. We'll talk to David on our Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit on MAV TV. So David Gravel uh, picked up the win. Uh, Last corner pass over Logan Shuhart on Friday night. (laughs) I hate that. I, I like it for David. I, we love David but you Gravel. hate it for Logan. Hate it for Logan, exactly. Uh, Brad Sweet and Joey sell down. And then Monday, last night, they got raced out, uh, rained out at Grace Harbor. Articat All-Stars, it was all Sheldon Hodgshield, two $10,000 to win shows, Attica and Wayne County. And he swept the weekend in his second and third consecutive wins. Bumper to bumper, IRA Sprints. It was Jeremy Schultz picking up the win in Sheboygan. And on Sunday... Your favorite to say. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Sunday, That's right, Billy Baylog at Francis Creek at 141 Speedway. Tri-City, uh, Tri-State Speedway for the MOA Tour it was Hunter Schoenberg. Attica Raceway Park, I know, Byron Reed, he won, of course. He always wins, Shocker. it seems like. Yeah, uh, and in breaking news, Thomas Kennedy won at uh, River Cities. At uh, Williams Grove, it was the Hammer, Doug Esch. And uh, we talked to Doug this past Saturday on Mav TV, and uh, just one of one of our all time favorites. Butler Motor Speedway it was Joe Swanson. Greenbush Race Park it was Austin Pierce, and Austin actually won two. We won at Buffalo River Race Park on Sunday. The fabulous Lincoln Speedway. How about Alan Crimes, race winner, and that was an exclamation point of a championship run. So Alan very Crimes, cool. very cool. Greg Hodnett, as we mentioned, won at Port. Mike Kirshner won at Wilmot. Williams Grove, it was the Billy Kimmel Memorial. Stevie Smith, and I was just reading Williams Grove tweeted, those are the first laps this year that Stevie Smith has led at Williams wow. Grove. They've been off a little bit. They've been off a little bit. I mean, yeah. but but the, with, the, with the now getting that win, uh, Port, with and then the National Open coming up, yeah. they can certainly turn things around in a heartbeat <laughs> yeah, yeah. and say, what a year, what a finish, yep. you know. So um, Stevie certainly. And on Monday, it was the 65th annual Labor Day Sprint Classic. Danny Dietrich, for the second time, scored the win. Uh, Dietrich went up there on Saturday night and finished second, and he tweeted, I'm sick of coming up to port and finishing second, so he fixed it on um, Monday. (laughs) And a a lot of times we talk about that race at port, and – you know, and it's it's an afternoon race, which are always tough. But mm-hmm. again, it looks like they did a wonderful job with the racetrack. Hodnett came from ninth to second. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we all understand it's an afternoon show, but good crowd, um, great, great, great fun, and great fair food. <laughs> yes, great <laughs> fair food. Exactly. Catching all your favorites. That's fair right. Food, Sheboygan. Sheboygan fair food and <laughs> um, and uh, sprint car racing doesn't get much yes. better than that. Uh, Eagle Raceway. We talked to uh, John Carney last week uh, about the race saver IMCA 305 Sprint Nationals, Aaron. 147 cars 
Lots and lots of folks getting into sprint car racing, mm-hmm. and this is really, really cool what they did. When it was done, Jack Dover picked up the win. Uh, good to see Jack rolling into victory lane. I, I met him earlier this year mm-hmm. at uh, Lakeside. Good, good guy. Yeah, good great guy. guy. Yeah, really cool. That's your Classic Inc. Uh, screen printing and embroidery results page. Classic Inc. is great for T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, towels, hats, and more. Corporate events, uh, other sports, school events, whatever you need, check them out at ClassicIncUSA.com. That's www.ClassicIncUSA.com. When we return, Sheldon Hoddenshield, he'll join us coming up. I'm Kerry Madsen, and you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Helping racing families heal. That is the driving mission behind the Steve King Foundation. Founded after the tragic passing of Steve King at the Knoxville Nationals in 2006, the Steve King Foundation has donated $300,000 to more than 150 individuals and families across 26 states, Australia, and Canada. Now in its 10th year, the foundation has launched Donate 88, an effort to raise $88,888 to continue the work of the Steve King Foundation to families in need. To make a donation, simply text the word donate 88 to 620 450 4604 and for more information and other ways to donate to the steve king foundation visit them online at www.stevekingfoundation.org hi i'm jeff gordon and now back to wing nation thank you jeff welcome back having a great time aaron everham and steve post here and our fly (laughs) continues to buzz around the studio here only when we're on the air during the commercial break we couldn't find him now here he is back again uh he must love talking Uh, sprint car racing as much as we do maybe he wanted to hear from our first guest our first guest spent a lot of time in victory lane this past weekend picking up the ten thousand dollar to win race at attica on saturday and the ten thousand dollar to win race the pete jacobs memorial at wayne county on sunday sheldon hoddenshield's on the line hello Sheldon, welcome back to Wing Nation. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. Well, congratulations. Tell us about uh, your two big wins this weekend. Uh, yeah, uh, had two big money races this weekend at Attica and Wayne County, and um, you know we're we were sixty points behind going into the week, and you know we don't really have nothing to lose, so uh, we're just going for wins right now, and and uh, fortunately we were able to do that this weekend at both Attica and Wayne County. Sheldon, I saw in the press release from Attica, I wasn't able to keep up with the race, but it said that you spun and did a 360 in front of the field on, like, lap eight. And then in your <laughs> interview, you said something like, well, this is a track that you can you can do that and get away with it. And I thought, hmm, I drove sprint cars, and I can't ever remember a time that I thought this was a good idea and could ever make it work. So what, what's the, what was your thought process behind that, and what did you mean in the interview? Well, uh, I think – Attica, the the track that night was probably the best I've seen it all year. Uh, we had something to lean up against on both ends, and and you could throw slide jobs on both ends uh, rather than just uh, one one or one corner or the other. So uh, I think that helped. And and actually, I spun out there, and and I got to get behind Chad and, or uh, Dale and um, Byron there, probably two of the best guys at Attica, and and I kind of learned a little bit from just following them for about five or six laps, and. And then I ended up doing my own deal, and uh, just, I was able to get some good runs on them, just ripping the top, and and was able to throw some slide jobs on them. So, uh, you know, I think it it was all right. So I still got to ask about the spin. When you when you're spinning in front of the whole field, and you think you just keep your foot in the throttle and pull the 360 off, were, were you nervous that someone was going to get collected, especially if there was such a curb? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I started spinning, and I just pinned it, you know. Uh, I didn't really care from there, and I kind of saw Dale and, and Byron coming, and, um, you know, they were able to miss me, so that was all good and, and didn't take anybody else out. So uh, it ended up working out all right. And then after the race, I asked Dale if he looked me in the eyes or not when we were when I was spinning out. What did he say? Funny. Did he see you? Uh, he said it. Uh, I don't know. He said, I was going to go under you, and I had to go around you. 
So gosh, that's, that's awesome. Up. I'm telling you what, when you're at Attica and you lose two spots, whether you spin or not, to Dale Blaney and Byron Reed, those are rarely spots you're going to ever see back yeah. again. So, uh, man, that is uh, that is really, really cool, really, really great. Hey, you've got three wins in a row. Um, you know, is it is it it what what's going on? Is it uh, just just everything really clicking? You mentioned that you, you know you know the points. You're you're not racing for points. Is that what it is that you can be aggressive and can go out and just do this? Well, I don't know. Uh, we kind of. Had a little bit of a struggle month there around Knoxville time, and and kind of got back to some tracks that we're used to, and and uh, some big money on the line too. So that's always pretty motivating for us. And um, you know, we're just doing the same thing that we've done all year. You know, that's been our goal to win to win as many races as we can. And and uh, you know, that's still our goal. We got some really good tracks coming up. Uh, you know, Eldora has been one of my goals uh, all summer. So I really want to win there. And and uh, Chill Coffee, we've been there a bunch last year. We haven't got to race there this year. And I think I led every race there last year and never won one. So uh, hopefully we can win at either of them two tracks yet. You mentioned going into this past weekend that you were 60 points behind and you felt like you had nothing to lose. Does that mindset change now that you, you've gained a little bit on the leaders? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, you know, third, I, I pretty much got third locked up, I would say. So, uh you know, we can only really go forward from here and, and uh, just get as much as we can each night. Uh, you know, Dale and Chad, they're just they're going to be smart and, and just try and beat each other is all they re- really got to do each night. So uh, um, if we can beat them and, and win these races, uh, I think we'll be there around the last race. Boy, I'll tell you what, I, I think you're right on that. I really do. You mentioned uh, the um, tour uh, next week is at Eldora, then goes down to Chillicothe to Atomic. But between now and then, uh, you've got a handful this coming weekend. It's the Tuscarora 50 at Port Royal. Um, you know, just describe what it's like as an all-star driver going into hostile territory there over at Port Royal. And uh, y- you can have a good night and not really get a good finish over there. This, this you you got a handful this weekend. Yeah, definitely. Port's uh, really difficult. Uh, we've had some, some decent runs there. Um you know, last year I think we led 25 laps of the test score 50 and, and had a restart on the halfway point, and, and Brett Marks ended up getting us. So, uh, you know, I'd say he's the guy to beat there, and, and if we can do that, that'd be huge. And uh, For this weekend, it's only a points night the first night, and, and the second night's just uh, try and win some money. So that's the goal. At the beginning of the show, Steve and I were talking about how this weekend is going to be a, a kind of a make or break when you have the posse joining you. Do, you. do you go into the race weekend with any different, you know, mindset or you just go out and do your thing? Yeah, I mean, we just kind of do our thing every weekend. We got uh, just me and Bonds and Zach and, and we show up, we do our thing, you know, and, and just focus on our car and, and the track and see what we can do and and, uh, you know, if we can beat the PA guys and, and maybe get them in between Chad and Dale and, and gain a little bit more points than we're able to when they're not there. So, uh, you know, just try and take advantage of it. Boy, yeah, that's for sure. Great opportunity here for somebody to uh, to stretch things out or gain some gain some valuable points. That's for sure. Sheldon, when we look, uh, of course, we talked about pretty much the All-Star schedule, three more weekends of All-Star racing. Are there other races? Have you looked down under? What's uh, what's what's the longer term goal as far as the season goes? No, really, I haven't made uh, any plans as of now. So, um, you know, probably try and find something for Chili Bowl and, and, and something that I think I can win that race. So, uh, you know, something that, that I think can win the race and, and um, you know, just see. I haven't really looked into Australia much or nothing. So, um, you know, I like to talk to Bernie. He knows a lot of people. So you never know what the 71 car is doing until uh, a little bit last minute. So. Um, I don't know, just haven't really made any plans, just focusing on our last couple weekends here and then go from there. Yeah, yeah it is. It's just uh, that time of year where uh, as things slow down in one part of the world, they seem to pick up in the other. And uh, but you've got a lot of work to do over the next few weeks trying to uh, gain ground, win some more races, and cash some more big checks. Sheldon, I'm telling you, we enjoy chatting with you all the time, and uh, congratulations on the success. And I know we'll talk down the road. Thanks for your time. Yep, yep. Thanks for having me, guys. There he is. at Sheldon Hodenshield joining us. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, what a wheel man. I mean, he, he really gets it. Is. He gets it natural. Yeah, he gets well, it on, yeah, well, he, he gets it honest, but he, but he, but it's <laughs> yeah. really strong. Yeah, and I love how confident but calm he is, and he's not arrogant about it. He's just confident yeah. and he's calm, and he's you know reminds you of Jack. He's just. 
cool. Sounds like him more and yeah. more. Sounds like him. He <laughs> yeah. does. You know, it's like just sounds like him yeah. and uh, drives like him. He, you know, he he maybe is not as wild. I was child. just going to say, not quite as might, wild child. Mike, tone it down just a tad from his dad's style. Yeah, I'll never forget. We had. Uh, I'll never forget. Kendra and I had Jack on years ago <laughs> when Sheldon was first starting, and so what advice do you give Sheldon? Be easy on equipment. And it's just like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I'm, I'm falling out of my chair. You know, Kendra's like, you know, is this thing working? Did we hear that right? You know, I mean, and that's what Jack said. You know, be smooth, be steady, and be, well, be good. Well, he learned the hard way. He so, learned the yeah. hard way, and he's still learning. He's running He's running the, the outlaw carts out at um, Kyle Kyle's Larson's event. deal. That's yeah, at Kyle cool. Larson's event. I saw him on uh, social media. I saw that. Jack's out there. So Always entertaining to watch. Yes, indeed he is. He, he, the, the wild child is uh, arguably the best, yeah. most accurate nickname in all ever. of yes ever exactly <laughs> hey we need to step away because uh well we talked a little wild child now we'll talk about the madman carrie madsen he joins us next hi this is sam hayfertip you're listening to wing nation on motorracingnetwork.com The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Honoring Sprint Car Racing's greatest achievers. 25 historic Sprint Cars on display. A movie theater featuring Sprint Car Racing film. And a breathtaking view of historic Knoxville Raceway. Go to SprintCarStuff.com for the largest Sprint Car gift shop on the planet. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. And we're back with Kansas Speedway, who is still sorry. That's right. I'm, you know, really sorry to the co-workers of my fans who have to listen to all that loud talking on Monday. And sorry my drink prices won't turn your weekend into a loan application. And sorry the chase for the championship is more exciting than your last date. The chase is on as the Sprint Cup Series Championship rolls in Sunday, October 16th for the Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas Speedway. Tickets at kansasspeedway.com. You're welcome. Time now for a look at a great American dirt track presented by another great American dirt track, the Speed Palace, Port Royal Speedway. I'm Ashley Stremme. Situated in one of the hotbeds of sprint car and dirt track racing in central Pennsylvania, Port Royal Speedway is considered one of the most competitive dirt tracks in the nation. Racing started at the fairgrounds in 1853 in the form of horse racing. Its first auto race was September 10, 1938. The cost of admission was 50 cents, and if you wanted a seat in the coveted wooden grandstands, that was an extra 50 cents. Port hosts a weekly schedule of sprint car, late model, and pro stock racing, as well as hosting the World of Outlaw Sprint Car and late model and all-star circuit of champions touring series. The list of track champions is a who's who of Pennsylvania racing. Dick Swarmer, Larry Snellbaker, Lynn Paxton, Keith Kaufman, Lance DeWeese, Todd Schaefer, to name a few. The Speed Palace also hosts the Tuscarora 50, one of the premier sprint car races in the country. Winners have included Bobby Allen, Kenny Weld, Doug Wolfgang, Dave Blaney, Fred Raymer, and Greg Hodnett. Last year's winner, Brett Marks, will attempt to defend his win this Saturday at the 49th annual Tuscarora 50. Port Royal Speedway, a great American dirt track brought to you by another great American dirt track, the Speed Palace. Port Royal Speedway. Thank you, Ashley. I think that was her favorite one. No, yeah. I know that was her favorite <laughs> yeah. one. Uh, we're having so much fun talking about the Great American Dirt Tracks and really, really cool. And uh, what Steve O'Neill is doing at Port Royal, I know we've just talked about it and talked about it, mm -hmm. but here we are in the middle. They had Saturday night, huge crowd, fair night. Monday afternoon, very res great crowd, very respectable afternoon racetrack yep. where guys could pass and guys could race. And here we go into the Tuscarora 50. They have got things rolling up mm -hmm. there at the Juniata County Fair, and uh, it's really good to see. And uh, so on Facebook a little bit later today, we're going to have uh, – you can share your favorite Port Royal stories, memories. You can do that on our Wing Nation Facebook page. And that, is, again, is Facebook.com slash Wing Nation. Uh, let's go back to the Hercules Tire Hotline. Joining us fresh off from Victory Lane in another big race, the Jackson Nationals, the Madman, Kerry Madsen's on the line. Hello, Kerry. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Steve. How's it going, mate? It is going well with me. Congratulations. Tell us, uh, tell us about your win on Sunday night up at Jackson. Yeah, I was driving for the Matt Wood racing team, and uh, we've got a great, great team there and obviously some really good equipment. And, uh, you know, I just I really wasn't expecting a lot. Um, just, you know, jumping a new team, you're like, it's going to take a while to figure out how to win. And uh, I tell you, the boys gave me a great race car in the A-Main. And uh, Saturday, we had a lot of 
that's a really good card up front. And I even told Shane, I said, oh, I don't, look, I don't know if we're going to be at the challenge for the win tonight. We don't really have track position. And uh, there's some quick cars that have got some good pace up front. So we'll just uh, hook in and then I'll just try and do my best and bring the thing home in a good position and straight. And uh, as soon as the race started, the car was a rocket ship and just drove straight up there. How emotional was that victory lane for you? Obviously, the team has been through a lot. The racing community has been through a lot, losing Brian. So how how emotional was victory lane for you guys? Uh, it was, uh, yeah, obviously very. Um, I wish I, it was, uh, you know, I didn't even want to really be in the picture or anything. I was just definitely emotional for everybody. And uh, just, um, I wish I, I wish I could kind of have words or know what to say. Um to make that situation better but uh all i knew what to do was just um sort of try to get out of the way and let the boys and everyone sort of enjoy the enjoy the moment yeah i don't know that there are words and i i, mm-hmm. I think you did the best thing you could do is allow them to park it there on the front stretch or you mm-hmm. parked it for them on the front stretch and you probably spoke volumes with that uh, i that, I hadn't even thought about that until you mentioned it. I'm kind of I'm, yeah, I just got I'm a the radio. Chills. Yeah, I got chills, and I'm a radio guy at a loss for words right now because I don't know how you would I, I, parking it on mm. the front stretch is what you, you 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 probably said more than any words can sum things up. And Carrie, you know, when you look at the last month of your life, when you look at you know you're there in Knoxville, and then you end up with the Canaric team decides they're not going to race anymore here in North America. Um, how do you describe or how do you put your arms around the last uh, three or four weeks in your life? Uh, well, I'll be honest. Um, I thought, you know, we always knew at some point that, you know, that every race team you drive for is going to yep. change, be in, in and out of business or change drivers or do something. So you, you always under the assumption nothing is forever. But uh, I thought, you know, and I was so hands on in that Canaric thing that, um, I mean, I felt like I didn't have a day off in the last five years just trying to get that team better and so much comes along you know you want to make everything perfect and uh i don't know i thought i'd probably be a little more upset when that thing folded but luckily for me that uh they could go either way um if your phone doesn't ring in the next couple of weeks or you're in trouble but uh fortunately a lot of people reached out and there's a lot of opportunities out there for me so uh it was kind of a big relief and uh, i'm really excited about uh what's it what's in, in store for the future and uh I'm still going to race for Canaric in Australia, so there's still a good relationship there. And uh, back to the U.S. and uh, maybe just get back to being just a, more of a driver. I don't, I don't really know what I'll do, but uh, this opportunity. So that's been kind of exciting, to be honest. Kerry, going back to, you, to the big win, you mentioned that you know you weren't sure you you had the car to win. You were starting eighth. At what point during the race was it something that just clicked, or the car just felt good as the race went on? Was there a moment that you were like, "All right, we've got a chance to to win this thing." I got a really good start, which, I mean, <laughs> that sounds stupid. I got a really good start, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> and uh, then I just started passing some good cars, and uh, I just noticed that I had, early on in the race, better pace. And when we went, I think, look, there, was, there was a lot of good cars out the front. There was Sammy, Brian, Brown, uh, my brother, uh, Lasowski. So when we passed a few of those cars pretty quickly, about five laps into the race, I thought, hey, you know what? <laughs> Stop pushing because there's a chance for the win here. And, it is 25k, but um, uh, it just you know it's 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 amazing the the sport of sprint car racing. You can work so hard, and you do just to try. It's all about winning. You try and you overthink it, and you do all these things. And then uh, we go out uh, on Sunday night with a new team. I mean, the guys got me a race car, and uh, you know that everything uh, aligned perfectly for me. The the passes came at the opportunity came at the right time, and we took advantage of it. In I always say, you know, people get so caught up and we have to win, win, win. But um, winning decides when it finds you. So as long as you're up front and running your best and just fate seems to, sometimes seem to decide when you win or you don't. You know, we a month ago we had a good chance to win the Knoxville Nationals and uh, we were competing and fighting, fighting up front and we had an engine let go. So it's just racing. And uh, if you can keep running up front, eventually some luck has to fall your way at some point. That's good. Yeah, that really is. Hey, when you have a race, whether it's the Jackson Nationals or 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 something, m- one of my things is, I mean, I, I do a lot, as you know, Kerry, I do a lot of NASCAR racing where we know 400 laps, you just got to set a pace and you got to do things. Sprint car racing, obviously you don't have all of those laps. When you have something that just takes off like a rocket ship at the beginning of it, do you have to alter your mindset as far as pacing, not to just burn the thing down in the first five laps of the race? How do you How do you manage the race like that? 
Oh, I, for me, I just try to push as hard as I can at all times. Um, <laughs> I do that. <laughs> I mean, if you sprint car racing, car's not, yeah, yeah. If your car's not very good, obviously you can't push overly hard because you don't want to uh, crash the thing. And and then sometimes if five or lap, five or eight laps in, your car will come alive anyway. So, but I think I feel like when opportunities there and your car's good, you got to push hard and you got to get to positions while you can because a, a sprint car racing thing, there's no patience because if you can pass a guy, you better pass him because in one lap or two laps later, situations you take, you might not be able to make that pass. So you got mm-hmm. just going to make the opportunities while you can. Speaking of passes and opportunities, it sounded like you had a, a pulled a close slider on your brother there to get the lead. How did that go after the race? Was he all right with it? <laughs> no, they weren't happy, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I remember Randy Hannigan said this one sometime years ago in Australia that sometimes you're the bug, sometimes you're the windscreen, but. I mean, I, 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 look, it's it's not, not a move that doesn't get put on me 20 times a night. You know, yeah. the world of outlaws when you race with them guys, it's just, that's part of it. So there's nothing to be upset about. You just, unfortunately, you got to lift and try to race back or settle in for second. So, um, but with 25 grand on the line, you got to take, when the opportunity is there, you got to take it. Yeah, expect Absolutely. it to happen, that's for sure. Um, Kerry, when you announced that uh, you're going to drive for uh, Matt Wood's team, the 17W car, I know we looked at Knoxville, the season finale there, and I know we were looking at the Jackson Nationals. Have you guys figured going down the road where you're going, what the game plan is, or how do you do that going forward? Good question. Uh, well, Noisy, the crew chief, sent me a a schedule for on a bit of paper, so I'm not sure how accurate that is. But um, I think we're going to do Spencer. Mm-hmm. The, water, the two Water of Outlaw races, Spencer, Iowa, and uh, Cameron, Missouri. And then possibly the Kansas City race and the Salina, Kansas race. And I think they've got Eldora on the schedule for the Fork Round. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe they have the World Final on the schedule. So, But wow. um, Matt Wood's, but in saying that, Matt Wood's been great. Uh, it's been a real fun team to be a part of. And, uh, you know, coming from Canaric, we're, we're we're kind of so regimented. This is kind of a fresher breath air, fresher fresh air, and I'm really enjoying it. So, but I believe that's what we're going to do. So, but you know, it's just a sprint car team, so who knows? <laughs> Could change tomorrow. So, when do you head back to Australia? When's the big day, and when does it start over there for you? Uh, I won't go till like December. Um, I, I'm sort of more concentrating on. It'll all dictate in whatever I get to if I get something put together for here next year. So. Uh, and then uh, the Australian schedule will have to kind of fit around that. But um, I, I do really enjoy racing in Australia, and it would be a lot of fun to go down to the Canaric boys again. But uh, nothing's real set in stone, and uh, I'm kind of enjoying it right now. It's nice to have a bit of a re- relax. I sense that, Kerry, and I know, you know, and, and we've talked about this before for those new listeners along the way. Uh, it's actually right here in front of us on the stage, the MRN car, Kerry, actually. And, and Kerry, you were so hands-on with the team. I can't imagine what it must be like to have a couple days off here and catch your breath. Yeah, like, you, look, you try to stay busy, but I'm not really accomplishing anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's probably, That's awesome. It's probably nice for a while, and then all of a sudden it probably gets a little a little stir-crazy when you when you have too much time. So Yeah, I know. Look, That's funny. My wife has plenty for me to do, and somehow I still manage to get none of it done. So <laughs> at some point I better start getting something done. So, no, look, I'm just, I'm at, I've am been, been busy, and uh, we're having a good time. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, it is. It's 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 interesting. It really is how the world changes, and you just kind of take the ebbs and flows. Kerry, we appreciate uh, your time. Congratulations on that win, and uh, it's good news for us as long as things stay the same as that piece of paper you have. We'll get a chance <laughs> to watch you at the World Finals, but uh, thanks for your time, and I know we'll chat with you down the road. Hey, thanks, guys. It's been 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 awesome. Great. Great talking to Kerry Madsen. What a guy. Um, winning decides when it finds you. Yeah. That I like cool. that. I like that because I think that you've got to put yourself, as he said, you know, you, I, I always say it's a numbers game. And if you run in the top five enough times, number one's going to come up. Yeah. And I think by his tone in the whole interview, you could kind of feel a sense of, uh, I don't know, like he said, relaxation, but the pressure was off. You know, maybe with what was going on with the Canaric team, it was just a lot of pressure. He got into the Matt Wood car and was just relaxed and it kind of came to him. He was very hands on with everything yeah. at the Canaric team. I mean, he was he was uh, yeah, so chief maybe, cook and bottle watcher and everything else. Yeah. I mean, Tyler Swank, obviously a great crew chief, no doubt. Absolutely. 
but Kerry had it, it was his interest every aspect yeah. of that thing, and and he worked his tail off when we were putting that MRN thing together. I mean, he was working his tail off on that program, the Canaric Racing program, to build it yeah. to what it is. And so, um, I can't imagine what it's like to well, wait a minute, I don't have to go just into the shop this morning. Yeah. <laughs> just be a driver, you exactly. Show up with your bag. Show up with your bag, and um, you know, so not worry about the details. Yeah, that's cool. That is really really cool. Love talking to the madman, and appreciate his time. Hey, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum located turn number two and. Knoxville, Iowa. They continue with the expand the dream. In fact, I think they're under construction now yes. and tearing things mm-hmm. down and building, building things up. Mm-hmm. Building now, exactly. You can find out more at SprintCarHOF.com. We always talk about birthdays. Sunday, Bobby Grimm, Dave Darlin, Steve Buckwalder, Jackie Holmes. Monday, Brent Kading, Willie Davis. Today, how about Bill Rose? Love Bill Rose. Great, great guy. Great guy. Bill Rose and uh, Bert Emmerich. Well, Emmerich, we'll talk about Bert here in a second. Uh, tomorrow would have been Jesse um, Hockett and Earl Halliquist's birthday. Thursday, Larry Dixon, Bill, uh, Bill Utz, uh, Hector Hanore on Friday, and Sammy Sessions on Saturday. But uh, Bert Emmerich, and uh, great, great name. We talked early on about the All-Stars and, and Bert Emmerich. And I guess I didn't realize the, the, all the details of it. He grew up as a photographer in Ohio. And in 1979 and 80, he wore, he operated the Midwest Outlaw Super Sprints. Moss is what it was called, M-O-S-S. Well, a promoter at a track that had their races somehow snagged the trademark to Moss out from under him. And so he was kind of left, but he wasn't one to just lay around and say, okay, well, we lost that battle. We'll just step aside. Uh in years past, there had been an all-star circuit of champions, and he always liked the name of that. So in 1970 or 1980, I believe it was, um, he started, um, yeah, in 1981, I guess it was, he took over the all-star name and continued it on uh, through 2002 when he sold it to Guy Webb. So uh, he was a 2000 inductee, class of 2000 inductee to the Sprint Car Hall of Fame. Today, big birthday for Burt Emick. Cool story. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you ever chance to, to meet him and his wife along the way or not? I, I think I have. Um, when I was racing a little bit with the All Stars, it was under Guy Webb's. Yeah. And at that point, yeah. he had purchased the series. But I did. I believe I got to meet them. Great people. Great people. Exactly. Yeah. Really cool. So, um, great stuff. And all those stories are contained at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Make sure you check it out and check it out online as well at SprintCarHOF.com. We need to step away. Uh, Dave Argabright. He joins us next. Hi, I'm Rico Avery, and you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Classic Ink USA Screen Printing and Embroidery is constantly testing the limits of custom racewear and specialized embroidery. Headquartered in western Pennsylvania, Classic Ink holds the highest standard, maximizing your return as well as the ultimate customer satisfaction. From track swag fan wear to quick crew crew wear, Classic Ink has you covered. Their dedicated staff and designers will keep your race team and fans looking sharp. Contact Classic Ink today and get your team ahead of the competition. www.classicinkusa.com That's Classic Ink at the track and on your back. Aggressive Hydraulics, where we engineer the cylinders that move your business. We specialize in crafting hydraulic cylinders and components with superior precision and performance, making OEM products stronger and creating more opportunities for distributors and repair facilities. Crafting cylinders that operate on a global basis in a wide variety of industries and applications. Get aggressive with your cylinder challenges. Aggressive Hydraulics. There's a place where time stands still, but the clock always ticks. A place where the roots begin. Oh, the heartland of stock car racing. But the tree is still growing. Green flag. It is out. Joey Logano on the... It's Martinsville Speedway. <laughs> NASCAR Sprint Cup Series races back to the half mile of Mayhem October 30 for the Goodies Fast Relief 500. Tickets are on sale now. Call 877-RACE-TICK or visit martinsvillespeedway.com to purchase yours. This is Tony Stewart. You're listening to Winged Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Thank you, Tony. Welcome back. It is great to have you on board with us here for MRN Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tire. Let's go back to the Hercules Tire hotline. Joining us, he catches uh, work uh, the best of times and uh, writing and column in Sprint Car and Midget Magazine. Dave Argabright is on the line. Hello, Dave. How are you? Hello, Steve. How you doing? Hi, Aaron. Hello. We are we are doing well. Everything good in your world? What you, what's, what's, what's going on in your world? Everything's great because I'm on vacation, man. I'm at the beach. Oh. Wow, man. Oh, man. Aaron, was at the, were you at the beach last week, right? Yes, I was at the beach last week. How about week. that? Yeah, man, you're I taking gotta... time for Wing Nation from the beach. How about that? 
That's pretty cool. Yeah. How about that? How about that? How about that? <laughs> pretty cool stuff. Hey, um, Dave, when we look at uh, this season, of course, we just wrapped up Knoxville a few weeks ago, and what a thriller that was. Uh, when you know, as we start to get into September, we start to look back and say, what kind of jumps out to the season? What's your thoughts? Is there something that some under underwriting or overwriting storyline along the way? As, as you start to look back at this season, Dave, what kind of jumps out at you, if as far as from your perspective and some of the things that you've seen? Well, obviously, uh, unfortunately, you have to think of uh, Brian Clawson's yep. loss as one of the leading stories, so to speak, of uh, the season that just affected just so many people across the entire sport. And uh, that's unfortunate that that's probably the top story of the year. But on a more positive note, you think about you guys touched on this earlier in the show. You know, Greg Hodnett and Donnie Schatz are having a great year again um, one thing about Greg that's always kind of a funny thing to me, I get an email from the uh, Speedway Motors little uh, point deal they have in Pennsylvania every week that takes everybody and throws them together. And this has gone on for a number of years now. I don't think I have ever clicked that email open and looked at it that Greg Hodnett's name was <laughs> at the top of the standings. I mean, every year, the first of the year, the last of the year, it doesn't matter. That guy's like a machine. That's cool. Dave, I know that you've known uh, Jason Johnson throughout his whole career, and you said that his interview in Victory Lane at Knoxville was one of the most memorable, exciting interviews for you. Tell us tell us what that was like for you. Well, it was just uh, almost surreal. You know, winning Knoxville obviously is just the moment for anybody in his career. I mean, even Donnie, as many times as he's won it, each time, you know, when you're close to him for that interview, you can just see – the enthusiasm and see what it means it's just hard to describe but when Jason won that thing it was just like this release of emotion for not just him and his team but everybody around him they were just so caught up in the moment knowing this is a maybe a once in a lifetime you know experience and um, it was just fun you know he he was just fun with his answers and um, they threw beer and champagne all over us, and I can usually dodge most of those, but they got me that time. And uh, it was just a great, great moment. I mean, it just was, you had to feel so good for him and Bobby. And, you know, like so many people in our sport, they have worked really, really hard to find a place for themselves in this sport and make it a career. And, and you just got to love it. You know, when you see people that have worked hard and see him get a nice reward and something that really means something it just makes everybody feel good dave from the overall perspective of the sport we we went out to knoxville and it was here we go again let's watch donnie shots be donnie shots and i i don't know i i'll, I'll let others debate whether that's good or bad that he, he he wins all the time but i would say for the for the, the the heartbeat of the sport someone winning like jason and taking it off from mm -hmm. donnie that has to be a high water mark for the sport and just overall pretty good pretty good news for everybody no, I have to agree with you, Steve. I mean, it's just a good thing all around. And, and I say that with, you know, total respect yeah. for Donnie and his team. I not only respect those guys, I like them. I like Donnie Schatz as a person. He's a great guy. Uh, he's a very interesting interview, hell of a racer. What else can you say? And I never cheer against him. But from the event standpoint, it's a healthy thing when people go home buzzing about something they saw that they think it's really really special and you know we've seen in the history of our sport you know steve kinzer had dominating years and one of my favorite sprint car races is the little 500 and eric gordon made winning that thing look easy and so everybody out there was ready for somebody different and it's not against somebody for winning so much it's just a healthy thing anytime you bring some uncertainty and some compelling angles to a race yeah you know, I know we're talking about the year in general, and one thing that I saw you posted on Facebook when Steve Kinzer said that he probably was running his last race, it was pretty emotional for you and for every sprint car fan out there, including myself. Uh, where do you think that story fits in for the year? Uh, it's pretty significant, although it's sort of been, you know, many years coming. We know that Carl Kinzer once said it pretty accurately when he says, you know, in terms of race drivers, they're all the same. Time gets all of them in the end. And that's just the way of life, you know, for all of us. And so um, it was a sad thing to think about just, you know, not having him around and not in a race car. And for me personally, throughout my career, you know, I started riding, you know, about the same time Steve started racing. And um, it was just all along my years that he was just a, a constant he and Sammy and then Doug for many years and 
to know that, you know, he's just not there anymore, it sort of drives home to me that, gee, you know, the years just pass and um, it's just not something you really enjoy all that much to see somebody who's meant so much to the sport move into a new phase of their life. When you look, and, and it's interesting, the, the parallels between your career and Steve's as far as the timing goes, as far as the calendar goes, um, is there a moment, whether it was whether it was something big on the racetrack that the whole world saw, or whether it was something where you and him just had a good sit-down, is there a moment that, that you would describe as quintessential Steve Kinzer? Well, I just remember, um, gosh, there's been so many moments, yeah. you know, up and down moments. Um, but, uh, gosh, I remember the outlaws came to the Indiana state fair. I think it was 1992 and, uh, Sammy as always on the mile, boy, he was fast and really strong. And he had a nice size lead when they took the white flag and he got to the back stretch and it was just a capacity crowd there at the fairgrounds that night. And they love Steve. He's a local Indiana guy. And, and Sammy got caught behind the lapped car as he came off a two there and had to lift for a minute on the mile. That's huge. And Steve, it was almost like you could see the shark taste in the blood in the water, man. He just went for it and he drove to the outside. And I still to this day don't know how he kept from flipping clear out across 38th street, but huh. he somehow he made it work up in that loose stuff and past Sammy coming off and, the place just shook with excitement. I mean, I know it wasn't a great day for Sammy, but boy, what a moment, you know, and that's just two great racers going at it like they had countless times through the years. And just that's one of so many moments that I'll just never forget, you know, in Steve's career. Speaking of Sammy, you said that your interview with him at the 360 Nationals was another one that was probably one of the special, most special in your career. What was it like to see him on the opposite end still winning races and, and seeing him in victory lane at the, at the Nationals? You know, it was really cool, Aaron. He, he really was strong all weekend, and then the A-Main that Saturday night, he just put on a clinic. He just never bobbled. It was just a perfect race for him. And, uh, you know, Sammy's had lots of people boo through the years and lots of people cheer. And he's always been that guy sometimes that wears the black hat and all of that. But uh, he's a, a neat person as well. And that, that stuff bothers him a little bit, I think, when people boo a little. And it, it's, it was neat. You could see on his face when he got out of the car and everybody was cheering. It was a neat moment for him, you know. And it was it was just a neat deal to experience. And uh, that meant a lot to him. And I guarantee you, whether he would say it or not, the fact that he won the very last race that Steve Kinzer drove in, <laughs> that meant something to Sammy. I mm -hmm. promise you it did. I was going to ask you about that when yeah. you said it. I, uh, I just thought the irony of that was absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. And uh, they had such yep. a spirited rivalry that uh, uh, Sammy pulled out of there that night and says, <laughs> I got you one last time probably. <laughs> That's right. I remember I wrote a story about those two guys last Oh, I mean, this was a long, long, long time ago about the rivalry. And I remember the finish that I used, and I still believe in this, and that is that one of these days way down the road, there's two guys in wheelchairs in the sunroom of a nursing home, and <laughs> they've got a checkerboard between them, Steve and Sammy, and they play one more game of checkers, and one of them wins, and the other gets mad and says, set them up, we're playing again. <laughs> you know, that's just That yeah. totally defines those two guys. It really, really, truly does. Dave Argerby joining us here. Of course, you can catch his work, Sprint Car and Midget Magazine. You can also catch his work on Mav TV as he is the uh, field reporter, pit road guy for the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. Uh, where are you off to next? I know you did Knoxville. Where are you off to next with that, Dave? Or are you guys done for the season well, on that? Nope. Going back to Knoxville, uh, not this coming weekend, but okay. the weekend after for the late model nationals. And then I'm off to Wheatland the following week for the Jesse Hockett Memorial with the ASCS Lucas Oil Cars. And really looking forward to that. I haven't seen sprint cars at uh, Wheatland for a long, long time. And it's just so cool. Jesse was a neat young man. And I'm, I'm looking forward to being out there and being a part of an event that remembers him. He's just... Um, that's been five or six years ago now, and I still just have vivid memories of him. He was just a special person. That is really, really neat uh, and, and enjoy. And and the, the uh, Lucas Oil, I, you know, I had been a couple years, and I actually caught a tour race at uh, Lakeside in Kansas City. Uh, man, I'll tell you what, there's there's some great racer. Emmett Hahn has created something for the 360 Tour that is just really, really special out there. Absolutely right. You know, it's it fits exactly perfect 
for a group of guys that are able to travel. It's within their budget. It's interesting racing. They go to some neat racetracks, and it's very competitive. I mean, uh, it's just uh, it's hard to win those races. Johnny Herrera is a heck of a racer, and he's still trying very hard to win that first championship. It's not easy to win. It's tough. And uh, Sam Hafer keeps having a great year with him this year. Uh, Blake Hahn continues to improve. I mean, he's got a great future ahead of him. It's a fun group of guys, and it's very, very competitive. Great young guys, great older guys, and a great mix of racing, that's for sure. And finally, Dave, the best of times. What's going on with your uh, – what's going on with the best of times? What's the latest storyline there as far as the, uh, the, the racing family goes? Well, Jimmy Wilson is still plodding along. Yeah. And i got to tell you, Steve, <laughs> I just can't believe this thing has uh, gone on for more than 10 years now. I, it was started out as just a fun little – fictional experiment and i can't go to a racetrack anywhere even a late model race but somebody said hey what's jimmy doing you know it's just kind of fun but jimmy's uh he's in the heat of a season right now he got himself spooled a little bit because he raced a non-usac race but you know as they say it's better to ask forgiveness than permission so <laughs> that's kind of where he is right now oh that's fantastic it's the best of times you can find that in a lot of dave's work uh, at sprint car and midget magazine dave uh and also the books now um mm -hmm. is it dave .com? that's it still plugging along trying to crank a book out every now and then what's the next one do you have one planned are you working on it yeah, actually, you got two projects working. I don't know what I was thinking when I got myself into that predicament, <laughs> but um, Jimmy Owens, the late model guy, I've uh, had a book going with him for a while and just kind of um, still keep uh, having to work around the season. It's the first time I've written with somebody who's still actively racing, so that's been a, kind of a learning experience for me. And also Jimmy Sills um, out west, you know, he wanted to do a book, and so earlier this year we kind of connected, and uh, he's sending me stuff, and we're starting to shape that up. So um two two interesting people i really enjoyed working with both of them that is that is very very interesting that's for sure dave we appreciate your time and we'll let you get back to the beach all right guys thank you very much enjoy being on the show there we go that is dave argerbright joining us sprint car and midget magazine we need to step away uh when we come back more of mrn wing nation hey this is donnie shots and you're listening to kendra and steve on wing nation here on motorracingnetwork.com The 25th year of the Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series is about to begin. Expanded national and regional tours, over 150 events across the United States, and some of Sprint Car Racing's biggest names and rising stars. The 25th anniversary of the Lucas Oil ASCS is one you don't want to miss. Find out when the American Sprint Car Series is near you in 2016 at ASCSRacing.com. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and get all the action away from the track live at RacingBoys.com. Hi, I'm Jeff Gordon. Did you know that 43 children are diagnosed with cancer each and every day? That more children die from cancer than any other disease? Athletes of all ages are dedicating their stats to change these stats, and you can too. Visit JeffGordonChildrensFoundation.org to become a Kick It champion. No matter what sport, you can use your points, laps, or goals to change the odds for kids with cancer. Make your stats really count. Become a Kick It champion. Hi, I'm Casey Kane. Now back to Wing Nation. Thank you, Casey. We are having a great time, and we are glad you joined us. Aaron Everham and Steve Post, appreciate the conversation. Love chatting with Dave Argerbright. Just yeah. to get his perspective as, uh, you know, and he has such a good good view of uh, not only wing sprint car racing, but non-wing sprint car racing being up there in Indiana. Yeah. And uh, just really respect his uh, respect his perspective on it. It's just really, really Absolutely. good stuff. Great to talk with him. Uh, Jeff Gordon's Kick It Person of the Week. We're going to give this to the, the, the Sprints on Dirt organization and Crystal Motor Speedway. And last week, actually, we told you about the Racing Awareness Organization, which is up at Michigan, the Helen DeVos Children's Hospital, and and uh, Ashley was here. But what they do with Racing Awareness is uh, it's a diversion from the medical world. It's the, using racing as a yeah. diversion, getting them out to the racetrack, That's get them awesome. involved, bring the cars out. Uh, our Jeff Striegel actually was our Jeff Gordon kick a person of the week, our Motor Racing Network Jeff Striegel, and they've been at it again here, Racing Awareness. They were guests, uh, patients, families were the guests at the uh, Crystal Motor Speedway for the Sprints on Dirt Race. Uh, Engine Pros Nitro Black 
product is the one that sponsored that. So there That's you go. That's great. Taking a diversion from uh, dealing with some significant stuff. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the Jeff Gordon Children's Foundation. Uh, God forbid any of us end up talking about pediatric cancer. Um, if you find yourself in that situation, go to their website, jeffgordonfoundation.org, and you can uh, get information. They are a great, great group that is doing all kinds of things as far as fundraising goes. In fact, they're, they've got, uh, I think, Jeff's Corvette is being auctioned, yes. so they're yep. doing the raffle tickets on that. But, uh, but great resources also should you find yourself – Mm -hmm. uh, looking around, looking up and saying, what in the world just happened mm -hmm. here? Because I can't imagine it. Uh, Jeff Gordon's organization is just a great spot to check it out. World of Outlaw Craftsman Sprint Cars, they don't, we don't have to wait long for this one Wednesday night. Willamette Speedway, of course, this West Coast stuff is uh, tough for us old folks. Yeah, I can't uh, make, I can't make it either. I can't make <laughs> it either. Uh, I'll get a chance to see a uh, sign-in and hot laps, and then I'll probably uh, – Wake up in the morning and find out who did what. Yeah. But uh, Wednesday night, Willamette Speedway. And then on Friday and Saturday, it's the 63rd annual Gold Cup Race of Champions. Yeah. Well, might have to that. stay up for that one. You might stay up yeah, for that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we'll exactly. See. It's hard with a uh, one-year-old. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, DirtVision.com going to have video stream of it as well. Yep. So it's a big weekend for that. That's at Silver Dollar Speedway. And really, Silver Dollar Speedway and Chico has a big weekend. They have four nights of racing. They actually race Wednesday night with the Silver War Sprints, the 360 cool. Tour. And then USAC CRA is there on Thursday, and then the World of Outlaws roll in. Uh, we mentioned this earlier, and we've talked about this a fair amount of time during the show. Articat All-Star Circuit of Champions, Tuscarora 50 weekend at Port Royal Friday night, the night before the 50. Saturday, the Tuscarora 50 itself. And uh, this just is becoming, it, it, it already is one of the epic races, and it yeah. just keeps growing in stature every year. And I love pictures of race cars with Ferris wheels in the background. Yeah, me too. I know. There's something about that. We used to see something that at Flemington. When nostalgic I was, about that. Yeah, yeah, when I was growing up with Flemington on the old cover of Gator Racing News or yep. Area Auto Racing News, they would always have a picture at Flemington of a Ferris wheel or something. Mm -hmm. And I just love it. And, uh, and then, of course, the fair food pictures. We like those on our <laughs> Tweet Your Seats, that's for sure. Uh, IRA Bumper to Bumper Sprints, uh, Friday night Amsoil Speedway in Superior, Wisconsin. Saturday Cedar Lake Speedway in New Richmond, Wisconsin. MOA Series presented by Neil Tire, Jacksonville on Friday night. Weekly 410 Racing. Thursday night, River City Speedway at Grand Forks, and they come right back on Friday night at Grand Forks as well. Saturday Racing, Badlands Motor Speedway, Butler Motor Speedway, Fremont Speedway, Sharon Speedway, and St. Francis County Raceway in Farmington, Missouri. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. They're off for a few weeks. They'll be in Wheatland, Missouri. I think Dave was mentioning that race coming up September 23rd and 24th. Regional action, Crossville, Tennessee, Belgrade, Montana, Queen City, Arizona, Lewisburg, Tennessee, Beaumont, Texas, and the big one down at uh, Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth, Texas, where they're doing just uh, just every car in Texas is invited to participate in this one, I think. Uh, sprint cool. cars are part of it, but there's street stocks and modifieds and everything else. Uh, National Sprint League is off for a few weeks or until next week. Clay County Speedway in Spencer, Iowa, US 36 Raceway in Cameron, Missouri, and Jackson Motorplex, uh, they're off as far as sprint cars go. But IMCA Stock Cars, uh, their Nationals are coming up on September 23rd and 24th. So we're getting down there on the list, which is not yeah, a fun part. I know. I you look forward to April. You actually like were able to do that without, like, really needing to catch breath. I know, exactly. Yeah. It's not. This is not good. This is not good what's happening here, what the calendar is doing to us, although I don't mind the uh, lack of humidity in the air that yes. we've had here. This yes. Has been There's crazy. something cool about fall racing, too. It's points championships, but yeah. it's a little cooler out. Love it. Really yeah. do. Love it. Working on I'm working on a road trip. I'm working on one ah. for a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. May have to take a little north. road trip. North. Oh yeah, north. Yeah. Yeah. Um the here's the problem, okay? Here's the problem. I don't know I don't know who I need to talk to about this, okay? Uh the Dirt Classic is at Lincoln. Yeah. The same night the World of Outlaws are at Lernerville. Oh, who did that? I know. Who did that? Now what am I supposed to do? Uh, so I'm working Watch on that. hot laps and heat races at one and then there we catch go. the feature. Exactly, yeah. The thing of it is is that I don't know, the, the, the Lincoln brings a Friday night show at Williams Grove with it. Oh. Uh, I don't know. But I see Lernerville is on my bucket oh, yeah. list. Yeah, Lerner, they're not close, though. You no, they're not close yeah. either, no. So need, um, Where's like a helicopter? Or where uh, Smoke. I need to call Uncle Smoke <laughs> and see if I can get on his fast plane. That's what I need to do. Good luck with that. Uh, MR on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit on Mav TV Saturday. We're going to hang out with David Graham. And mm -hmm. so always great to talk with David and see what's going on in his world. MR on Wing Nation Weekend presented by Hefner Racing Products on Thursday. Greg Hodnett going to preview the Tuscarora 50. Who better yeah, to perfect. preview than Greg Hodnett? So great, great stuff. MRN.com is all your racing and sprint car news. Our Wing Nation page on Facebook and our Wing Nation Twitter feed. 
very, very good as well. And MAV TV and Lucas Oil Racing TV website as well has our Sage Fruit program. Hey, we appreciate uh, Sheldon Hodgshield, Kerry Madsen, and Dave Argerbrett for joining us. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on MRN Wing Nation. You've been listening to the nation's premier winged sprint car radio program, Winged Nation. Tune in next Tuesday at noon for more talk from the dirt tracks. Winged Nation is also available on demand in the MRN.com Media Center or download from iTunes or Stitcher. Winged Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.